We can invite her back for the lesson. <laughs> First of all, is we're going to watch a movie for a couple of minutes. Um, what I would like you to do, the, the, there were three versions of this. There's the five minute version, the nine minute version, and the one hour version. So you're getting two minutes of the five minute version. <laughs> um, what I'm going to have you do when I stop it is just um, talk amongst yourselves at the table and try to come up with about five things that you see. Um, it was appropriate to the time period, it's a battle scene. And it's um, the Senki Gahara, did I say that right? Battle. And so um, there is no dialogue, that's the reason why I chose this. There's this like awful kind of mood music, which you don't have to hear. No, 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 I could sing to you, but my family wants me to get a singing lesson, so I'm not going to do it. So anyway. So can we do a Yeah.
And what I've been having do is have one person, and you can choose the speaker and what you see in the movie. Um, this, as I said, was the five minute version. There's a 60 minute version, there's a nine minute version, um, various levels of blood gore and whatever kind of else going on. And I think it was a precursor to the um, Shogun Total War 2 video game that's coming up. So, um, but yeah, it, was, uh, huh, so it was appropriate to the age. I don't know, but uh, anyway, let's take a look Any observations? Uh, we've noticed the different color and the armor uh, from each side, and we saw that there was uh, someone overseeing the battle, and then he also had different color on his armor as well. Very different color okay. um, John. <laughs> John talks all the time. I talk all the time. I'm a lot of major. And then we also noticed that uh, one of the uh, soldiers or warriors had the collar you know, forms on the helmet. So that's when they lined up, lined up, and then charged, much like they did in Britain. That was why you know, the character they thought was crazy because they had to stand up and shoot each other. And what else? Only a few of them were on horseback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. We're going along with the way they were lined up. Um, it almost seemed like a prearranged battle. They they waited. They they basically charged into each other at the same time. Uh, the, the armor was really elaborate. Um, the main leaders, like the Tokugawa, he wasn't actually in the fray. He was almost kind of like a chess piece. He was in the back while everybody else went and were wiping each other out. And the expanse of it seemed limited, at least in terms of space. Like there was a forest and a forest and a plain. And it didn't extend past that, so just basically like a chessboard in the way. Last but not least. Well, we mentioned a lot of those same things. Mm -hmm. And oh. just the idea of like dispensable foot soldiers going mm -hmm. first. Oh, and that they were wearing, they had different armors, so they were wearing white and then flags. And then kind of so you could tell what part was happening. And that the, the, we had a debate about, or we had a, alternative perspective to the battle formation. Good question. Remembering that there was something about having a long, narrow line of, ba of battles so that they could more easily maneuver through mountainous terrain. And that, that looked more like a um, more European kind of mm -hmm. What's it called? Flint? Flint? Phalanx. Phalanx? Phalanx? Maneuver. So it's more like a Roman centurion. Right. So we were like, hmm. They probably didn't get that from Rome. So. Is it the music came with that? Yeah. That was in your choice? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy to have it in the theaters when I first played it. I made my son listen to it. He's like, oh, the music is awful. I think I'm sorry. So, uh, anyway, um, that was just kind of an opener. But um, my lesson is my lesson focus question is asking what role did samurai have? Japanese society, so you can see why I was panicking a little bit this morning when we were listening to Professor Berry. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at some cause and effect. I went through my textbook, just as you're doing right now, and I sort of paraphrase um, a chunk of the textbook. And we're going to look at that because it had the structure, since we've been talking about this, of cause and effect, and so that would work with so I'm going to show you how I did that. We're going to look at some primary sources. You've seen two versions of primary source papers, and so mine's going to look slightly different. And I think the lesson for that is, you know, yeah, they look different because you make them work for yourselves. They're templates, and templates are made to be a little good, and you know, what one looks like for one lesson may not for another. And so um, there isn't an audience in my primary source materials because you're looking at objects, and so you know, that will be one of the differences that you'll see. And we're also, if it's impossible yet, to we're going to look at some of the Hojo Tsunes, so there's mm -hmm. a um, there's 21 codes and mm -hmm. so there's a lot to kind of fit into, I guess, the shortest ones. So, um, if you could look in your handbag, and go to the first page, you'll see cause and effect. And 
so this is, as I said before, paraphrased from my textbook. And you'll see that some of the words have been kind of grayed out or um, they've got some color on. So my question again is why was samurai needed and what role did samurai have in medieval Japanese society? So my directions are I want you to read the passage and as you read circle words and phrases that signal cause and effect. Well this is this has been done for you in this instance, kind of give you an idea. Again, there's in the binder that we have, and you'll see in Dropbox, there is a template, and it will you know, give you words, vocabulary, signaling cause and effect, and different structures. So this is going to try and get the, the quick and dirty version so you can get it. Um, I know you all will anyway. So what I'd like you to do is to read through this now. And on the next page, you have a graphic organizer. Okay. So take a look. Sorry, I'm waiting this around. You can't see it, can you? <laughs> Sorry. So take a look at the graphic organizer. Um, one of the things that I always do with this, and this is what makes sense to me as a teacher when I'm teaching my um, predominantly English learners, low um, income school students. So they need a lot of scaffolding, similar to Caitlin students. So I say to myself, and it makes it a little bit easier for them, I hope, because whatever it is happened, as a result, even though that's not written there, it's to sort of get them to see that because something has happened, this is the result of that cause, and so it's the effect. So take a look at the um, graphic organizer. What we did is we split it into two, and again, you, you, know, you change it to make it work for you. So look at the reading first of all. So powerful nobles for each other. That through. And then what I'd like you to do, this is going to take about three or four minutes, see if you see how you get along with the graphical organizer. So I've got the answers here and we'll, we'll go through it together. So read through it first of all, please, and then look at the graphical organizer and see how you would complete that handout. Does anybody clear or leave? Okay, so you, you paraphrased this so yourself, and then I did. I did. Yes. Here, I'm sorry. Did you provide it, it, cause and effect words? It's about? not it's really no. paraphrased. There's it's excerpted. Okay. So the piece that's paraphrased is it's the one that's in the bracket. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. That's well, they added that was oh, to make sure like for clarity. Cool. Thank so you. Most of the, most of it is the exact right. words from yeah. the textbook. Got it. And you see the ellipses there? Yes. And those are the just one few words that are like that. Normally, if I was doing this the first time, my students, as I said, you know, I've got sort of, um, students who struggle, and so I would be doing this with them. I kind of yeah. threw this at you and let you at it, and um, it looks like most of you did a really good job with it. So thank you. Um, so if I was looking at my reading passage, so I've got my keywords and all that stuff there. So powerful novels fought each other over land, and you actually have the effect that was seen when I started you off with so much. Uh, cool, eh? <laughs> so, um, the fighting destroyed land which made it difficult for peasants to grow food. So this is the key because my writing is horrible and I would not be able to fit any of the words into these boxes if I was doing next to them. So this at this point becomes a, a cause because they're destroying the and so this cause begets, or well, that's old English, but um, begets another effect. So what, what effect did it oh. oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> any, any thoughts on what the effect was? Because the land was being destroyed, which made it difficult for peasants to grow food. So something was So some... Real or excellent. So, some poor people being <coughs> bandits and thieves. We haven't done anything about this third column right now, but that is, you know, if you had a question about why would somebody do this, um, any comments or conclusions, you, this is the bit where we're asking you as a student to do a little bit more thinking, not just copying the words from the reading section. So it's the, it's the bit where we're not really wanting you to start thinking, well, you know, why did this happen or what's going on here? And we're looking at that question again. Why were samurai needed? So we're leading towards a potential answer for that. So um, 
these are some of the conclusions that were put in by Megan Donna. Um, so you know, we've got some vocabulary here and some clarification of that as well. There's nobles. Um, if you've done the Middle Ages, students may be familiar with that. They may have forgotten it because we've moved into the next chapter. And so again, we're giving them that definition. Um, destroying, what does destroy mean in the terms of this chapter and this part of the textbook? So the only thing they know that the little brother came home and destroyed the you know, iPod or whatever it was, but um, it's just sort of like bringing, bringing the vocabulary to, um, to the knowledge and making sure that they're familiar with it and they understand it in this context. So, anyway, moving along. So because the emperor did not notice the problems growing in the country, what was the effect? Um, Melanie? I'm sorry, I'm just up. That's okay. So where are we? Because, oh, uh, designers needed to protect their own land. Right, so here we are. Okay. Uh, good job. Okay. Uh, good job. So, any conclusions from that? Sorry, <laughs> you're so excited. <laughs> so um, at this point, I, I would be asking the students to answer for me um, why were samurai needed, and so based on the information that we have here, what is going on? Um, we've got man being destroyed, we've got fighting going on, we've got people becoming bandits and thieves, and so to answer the question, why were samurai needed? Why would samurai be needed? Um, Daniel? Um, to, um, so I'm going to say, please can you start with a sentence then, so samurai were needed? The samurai were needed because the landowners wanted to protect their land. Okay, good. Okay. So, and again, my my students, I would have them read the whole complete sentence so they, you know, they're not just giving me two or three um, words that don't make that much sense. So I want the whole thing and they're using academic language. So um, the next section, very similar. Yes. Okay. Uh, I like how you have the words highlighted in your in the actual cause and effect boxes. Is that something you would ask them to use in their summary sentence, or is that just strictly for the first? For me, it would be mainly knowledge, um, but we're going to be getting to a writing assignment, and so those words are going to put to know because they're going to be looking back on this, hopefully, um, as they're putting together the paragraph or the essay that they're going to be assigned. So you know, I'd be looking for them to use it. Those are also words that I think we assume that kids know, right. but they don't really. Right. And right. so um, I could. I could see myself taking a period and just, you could spend almost a whole period on this if, if, because what it does, like we've talked about how the primary source analysis, analysis sheets stop kids slowing down to look. So if you pick a really important part of your text and slow them down like this and really get in and say, what does it mean to destroy a piece of land? What does it look like before? What does it look like afterwards? Um, our um, English learner kids might not know who bandits and thieves are. Um, what does it really mean to protect something? I mean, you know, a as an adult, yeah, we know what these things mean, but do the kids really know how they apply in the situation? So again, going back to the English language learners, and for my kids, who need a little bit more scaffolding. If there are specific academic vocabulary words or discipline-specific vocabulary words, which I want them to use again. I will not only put it there, but I'll take those words and I will put them up on the word wall for that day. Um, so they know that that's their cue, so they, they can look at it there too. And also, these could be words that you, uh, you could uh, pre teach people to advance their readings as well. So, you know, this is the vocabulary word, and you can read words, watch it, you can read the words, or look at this paper. And, you know, there are lots of different techniques that they familiarize the students with them. So, yeah, did you guys get a chance to finish your text deconstruction answer? Did you, did you do the second part? Okay, so we have the second part on the second question answer. So take a minute and make sure we have the second part of the text and that second question answer because we'll need both of the answers. 
And notice that one kind of long arrow, <laughs> which goes from part one down to part two. You are not going to go through all of the boxes that you did just oh, man. because I think it's similar to what we did before, unless you want to. But um, what okay. was the role of the samurai in medieval Japanese society? So again, um, whoever the poor and fortunate volunteer is going to be, um, I, I want you to answer in a complete sentence. So that's something that I've been really trying to stress with my students because they grunt or you know they they, they fall. You know, that's not really you know I want them to be able to speak in good academic English. So um, the poor and fortunate volunteer this time is going to be Sandra. So what kind <laughs> We're answering question number two. So, our, so um, yeah, the role of the samurai at the bottom of your... Oh, the role of the samurai in medieval, in medieval J uh, Japanese society was to provide protection for the land. Okay. Who's that? Uh, daimyo. The daimyo's land. Thank you so much. If I had something, I'd give you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> she gave you a post so the next part of the lesson, um, we're going to look at primary souls. If I have a PowerPoint because you don't have the pictures, yes or yes. Can I just ask a quick clarification? In light of the conversation that we had this morning about the definition of a samurai. Yes. So if the powerful nobles in the beginning were fighting over land, didn't they already have samurai? Um, and so then, when they hired samurai, is that is that? Can you distinguish between them? We're just arguing over tea. Huh? We're <laughs> arguing over tea. Um, it depends on what we picture fighting to be. So what? Yeah. This that was that this was the bit that Professor Barry probably muddied the waters because I'm you know I'm using what I have at yes. my disposal, right. and I'm trying to teach my students to be able to engage and read um, a textbook. Yes. And this is what was in the textbook. Gotcha. Um, so I don't, you know, I, it's important to me that they get lots of perspectives, and this is one perspective, and it's the very, very summarized version that, you know, I have three weeks just like Carol um, yes. to, to go through. So. My reason for choosing this primarily was to teach them the structure of cause and effect. Um, we probably at some point should go back and say, well, you know. Well, it's like like Professor Barry and Professor Bush, they were saying, like the militarization of these conflicts, you know, they used to sort of compete that court, and then eventually they started, you know, hiring toughs to go, you know, beat up people and like, but they accompli, you know, take land in the countryside, and so. Well, I, I think, yeah, I also would say, which I hope is clarifying, is that, so this is kind of that period of transition out of the Heian, everybody's at the court, they're writing, they're wearing nine kimonos, all that kind of stuff, to more conflict and turmoil in the countryside. So that's becoming apparent, and they're saying, uh-oh, this is, you know, yeah. This is going to cost me. I need somebody out there who's going to take care of my land. Right, because as we know, land is a premium. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right. Usable land is a premium, I should say. Not you know, lots of land and things like that. But it's not well, usable not for. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know if you all heard that. I thought that's a great line. Yeah. Andrea said you can have all the mountains you want. So <laughs> they're fighting over that flat fight. <laughs> <fire. laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> Samurai class, or are they aristocrats? Because, like, so med medieval, you could be a lord and a vassal at the same time. Right. right. You have that yeah. same situation existing in Japan, too. <laughs> they asked me this in our planning meetings, and I'm like, Daimyo, really? They come in, like, the sort of the, the period of fighting that Professor Barry was talking about. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, everybody has court rank at the highest levels. Um, 
and so do like all the big the the, the, high, the highest echelons of the of the lords, the military clans. So are they are they getting their lands from the emperor? Right. No. Um, no, but like. And, and and court rank, you know, and these offices, like the offices are totally like void of responsibilities other than like being a fancy title. Yeah. But like it was still seen as prestigious and therefore people wanted them. Um but yeah. I'm sorry, you said it's, that they that's not, not a land, it's not a land exchange thing? My understanding they're is not they're fighting they're over there. direct over actual land until like until later later like the 1500s okay. over like rights before that they're fighting <coughs> over income <coughs> rights okay and like who's gonna, who is going to squeeze the peasants are they for the rice and how much of that rice they're going to take are they fighting for their land or unrelated so all the land is claimed um, and i just want your land like and, and this is part of the complication is that in the classical period the land was all like by the, the state claimed, claimed all the land, and then over time the state stopped collecting taxes. Um, people start making private claims to land, and then people start giving away little chunks of land rights. So it's very complicated. Sorry, sorry. Um, Good yeah. questions. Yeah, no, I just I, I've never really know how to explain that very. It's complicated. Well. Like yeah. even even at the graduate level, yeah. like what's going on with land states? Let's not even get to go there. Tell us about our primary source. Okay, yeah. so you are going to see, this is the handbag that um, I'm just going to briefly go over with you. I know you need to be in that. So in your, um, in your handbag, the the react that the one likes to do, um, take a look at this. So when I did this with my students, we took over half a period, filling in what the source was, where it was from, and the possible years. And so I did that, and I also wrote the focus question because, again, it spent, we spent ages doing that, um, differentiate depending on your student level. But what you're going to be doing, um, as we put the PowerPoint artifact pictures up, um, is to complete this. So the first source is going to be um, the samurai source. And so what I would like you to do is, just as you've done pre previous two days, what does it look like and what are you looking at? So it's just basically at face value, you know, what is it? They're actually upstairs, um, and so you get to see them. And there are two slides. There's this one with the sword in there. Now, I would call it a sheath, but what, what is it called? Yeah. A scabbard. Okay. And then the next one, you see the swords not in their scabbard. So what we're going to do is we'll have like a minute looking at them. Um, so I want you to answer the questions. Can what you know that we were going to do for that one? Oh, okay. So, so eight, well. So it's tell me who's going to do the swords and I'll give okay. you a color copy. So swords. Okay. Color copy. Pistol and gun. Color copy. And then these two tables will do the, um, the show the slides, but the, the tables that looked at whichever photograph it was, um, just really, really quickly, what do you see answering the questions? Um, one thing that you see, one thing that you think it means, uh, maybe if you have one, a question that you came up with while you were looking at the artifact. So, um, sword table, raise your hands. Okay, what was something that you saw? I saw that. The uh, swords had sheaths or scabbards, and it tells me that they wanted to keep the um, sharp implements safe and clean. Okay, right. Um, what does the what does this mean? Why do you send the selling factories here? Um, what, what was the use of it, or what would you want to do this to be? I like the way that you answer the complete yes. sentence as well. Good job. So, um, what does it mean for somebody else in the paper? The adornment of the sword and sheet represents the fact that it was an incredibly critical piece of material. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, does anybody on this table have any questions? Is this also the point where so what this means? Is it what it means to us, or is it how it relates to the question? Question. Oh, I didn't answer the question. Oh, 
Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, y
very established infection. You can see these were uh, most years. We're looking at 1650 to 1868. So, we're entering a peaceful period. It's not mass production, so it's right. Okay. Yeah. But my question was, if, and I think this would be the kid's question, um, if you had a gun, why would you mess around with a sword? Well, well and that's well, why well, they stopped using guns. They, <laughs> they, they were banned, um, is that right? Because yeah. they, you know, like they killed people. There was no skill to shooting somebody as opposed to um, engaging them in the sword. Yeah, so Carol and then well, one of the other questions I had is how accurate they were because these barrels would not have been rifled. And so, you know, to his question, in the, and I also wonder how long it takes to load them. Mm -hmm. so they said that there's probably still a place for other types of weapons, even if we do have a right. at this point. But, like, even these, um, which I'm given to understand, are um, a technological improvement on the Portuguese models um, in terms, just because they have better metallurgy in Japan. Um, so these are, like, yes, compared with, you know, say, muskets in the okay. American Revolution or rifles in the 19th century, uh, they're not that great, they take a while to load, um, and, you know, the risk of misfiring is bad, um, or high, rather. But, like, even so, compared with arrows, um, they can do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And because the armor isn't plate like European, um, you know, it's actually more vulnerable to, you know, um, bullets. bullets. So, <laughs> yeah, so like, yes, they are not anywhere near as, as good as later technology, but compared with bows and arrows and swords, they did a lot of damage. And I would actually question, Karen is not here. Um, I would question the citation because I think these are definitely earlier 17th century weaponry. So that rifle looks very much like what? Yeah. Yeah. That, and that think, looks like something from the American Revolution. I think the samurai sword earlier that we see here also um, is from the Edo period. If you look upstairs, it says yeah. Edo yes. on it. Yes. So. I've actually had a really hard time finding yeah. any images of swords pre Edo yeah. period. We had the same problem. Yeah. yeah. That was why we had it. Yeah. So if anyone <laughs> finds <laughs> one, <laughs> well, they exist in Japan. Uh, no, I don't think the museum here has any, um, or we would have put them in probably, right? Is yeah, yeah. yeah. Really yeah. It, it goes back yeah. to that whole idea of the samurai being romanticized mm -hmm. and not fighting. So in the fighting period, they're using this stuff up. And it's, we tried to look for paintings and writings, and it isn't until the Edo period when we get all these romanticized pieces, and they're not fighting, that... And, and you're right that these would have probably been made for display. Um, but, uh, and in fact, if you go to castles now, they have racks of swords and guns. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they were made for display because they were used in battle before, so... And in the, um, the, the example of the armor, we borrowed that from the Tokyo yeah. National Museum. It's not from this museum. Mm -hmm. We have to get permission to be able to put it into it. But that one was mm -hmm. so it was here on exhibit. Um, oh, obviously. Um, it's yeah. 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 Because the one that's in the case yeah, is Edo. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't want that. So we asked Karen to get something that was from the time period. I don't know if, if your guys' textbooks like emphasize this, but these two pieces kind of made me think, because um, my textbook always presents Japan as being very ethnocentric and, you know, isolationist, and I kind of like these two pieces because I like how they integrate, I think it's crazy that they integrate guns into samurai fighting, you know, and then it has to be banned, but I kind of look at that in comparison to like Korea and China where they're really more questioning, you know, you think of the boxers and they don't believe in guns, you know, or, or Korea is the hermit kingdom, you know, and I, I do think that this kind of demonstrates like how Japan kind of takes modern technologies and incorporates them and then even makes them better than the Portuguese, you know, or it does say a lot, I think, about their, their views of Europeans at that time and then contact to Europeans too, you know. So I like the guns. I think they're kind of, well, they're very pretty. But. And in the movie, I, I stopped it, but um, they actually do use cameras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, but anyway, um, 
So before we do, if you look down at the bottom of your artifact sheet, we're going to have students write. So the question for this one, and it's always good to have a question to help students focus. How did these artifacts help the samurai, the samurai used? And I think this, along with the cause and effect one, was where, because I talked with Beth a couple times, so I had already gotten that and had a chance to chew on it a little bit. So I was hoping to integrate some of that reality of death and war and things in with the cause and effect piece. I think you can do that with vocabulary development and in with the reality of this one. <clears throat> so I learned from Andrea yesterday that the Japanese swords are curved and that is all the better to kill somebody with and get your sword back. It just works better for whatever reason, if they're curved. So easier to yank out of human flesh. I did this story. That's counter. I never knew that. Sorry. Did you not know that? It doesn't make sense to me, but I'll I'll, I'll buy it. I never tried it. Andrea said it, so it was mine. That's good. I was one of those children who was paraded through an East Coast museum with arms and armor and taking it. I just paraded through. So um did you just take that? Yeah I did because I don't want to um, so what, what we were trying to do with this lesson was to take the cause and effect, um, take the primary sources, and we, from the primary sources, um, and this is, gonna, this is not in your handouts, but it is in your total lesson. So these are some excerpts from Hojo Su so Un. So -un. Um, this is one that Beth gave you. This is the Daniel from 1495. There's a lot of um, information in the handout that Beth gave you. Um, very interesting guy. I would give this context to the kids. He lived a long time. He did a lot of different things. So his codes are, um, I don't know, hard time seventh graders, I'd say. His codes are cooler than other people's. Um, because he had all these very life experiences, and because they were so cool, they were not only used as examples, but they also um, were used for copying, um, like um, in the early 1800s, kids had to copy lines from a reader, so that's the way for calligraphy. They had to copy them, so they were learning them in many different ways. So the, this is the primary source. Um, it, that goodness fits in with, um, it, it is the warring period. And he has um, a lot of land and he's getting towards the end of his life and he wants to um, put together what he's learned. So, um, so Helen and I look, there's 21, um, you know, if you had a chance to look at those last night, there's 21 different articles. Pretty much they're all cool. And, um, you know, there's, this is certainly not the only thing you could do with those articles. But what we picked out was 21, which is actually the last one, which talks about Boone and Boo. <laughs> Boone and Boo. Um, and it is, Beth touched on it at the end, the art of peace and the art of war. And this is his... Um, belief that that's important. So much so that it's really kind of taken for granted in this. He leaves it till the end. It's kind of like, oh yeah, don't forget that both. Um, and, and the thing I would also say is that um, this is probably more so for that upper echelon elite court connected um, warriors and not the guy who's working part time on his land and paying taxes and fighting part time and and wearing kind of scruffy clothes. It's the guy that has the money, that maybe has the horse, that has the fancy sword. Um, it's kind of that more elite level. So these are the, the ones that we chose. And what we did in the lesson was we gave you, Andrew, very nicely, um, gave us some background on Hojo Soon. And also sung on Boone and Lou. Um, and the thing that's, that's in what we read that Beth gave us 
um, according to Sa'un. Uh, Bun was seen the literacy, the culture was seen as the tool of power, and military arts was the ticket to power. And you, you had to have both. And the reason was, and, and we haven't talked about lots and lots of them, but um, we know from yesterday that the Buddhists had temples, they had money, they had land, they had power. And a lot of them were administrative people to, um, to these daimyos. And um, you needed to be able to read as, so that you wouldn't be taken advantage by those people, which makes sense. Um, and you also needed, um, so boo is, it's one, it's one thing and not. So there's horsemanship, archery, and swordmanship. Right. And, and uh, boo is not, is everything that's weapon that's archery, not archery or horsemanship. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah. So those, those were the three things a good samurai was. He was a horseman. A good archer, and he was good with with swords. So it's kind of like this this whole package that goes along with it. So uh, what we decided to do to get the most bang for our buck is I didn't want the kids to have to write those articles again, right? They, you know, not worth it. So. Um, I kind of created a graphic organizer. I would have, I would go through with them first and kind of read those over, ooh, the big one that I gave you, um, and talk about them. This is background for me. But then I put these here, and what I wanted the students to do was to put it in their own words. And I'm going to flip now, and I didn't do Helena's cool thing with the stickies, but this is the key. And so again, what I went through, because this is just, and, and um, the cool thing is this last, this, yeah, this last spring, I um, we worked at the middle school and I got to go in and do, um, teach kids a lot. So um, I'm even more aware of all the words that I want kids to understand. So I just kind of highlighted ones that I thought were really important. And as a teacher, when I'm doing this with 12 year olds, I would make sure that we talked about that and um, have them, if possible, write it as close as they can to the word so they're getting it in context, um, and then talk about it. So, um, so the first one talks about bun and boo and, and kind of sets it up, this code of horsemanship. And um, so those would be the kinds of questions that I might ask the kids, because I would do that first. Why do you keep us for last? It's a matter of course. I tried to kind of give in the key um, some thoughts about that. So, <clears throat> and in the key again, which is probably too small for you to see, but the second one is about not wearing really ostentatious clothes, which I thought was good for most of the kids. Um, <laughs> uh, and again, um, I, I would suggest you look over the articles because there's maybe some that you would choose to use with your kids because there's just all kinds of stuff. What was the other one, Helena? That, uh, well, there was one about not gossiping, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Don't gossip, but you know, yeah. get your own reason. Yeah. Check the doors at night, you know. Drinking and partying. Yeah. Um, so this one um, was really about um, be modest. You know, don't be showy and bragging and all those things. Um, the next one <coughs> was respect, and that was really what drove us um, to using this was we had the swords, but we wanted something that showed that kind of respect, loyalty, serve aspect of that. So we thought that that one got at that, whatever it is, nine. Um, Twelve, we especially liked because it talks about the importance of reading and writing. Um, you know, I mean, we're, we're, <laughs> we're creating our own interpretation here by the articles that we're choosing. Um, that's how that happens. And then the last one <clears throat> is about practicing writing. So, um, so I would have the kids highlight or circle after we, they did with partners. I would model the first one, and then they would talk with partners about what they meant, write down their own words. We'd talk about it as a class. 
but I would make sure <clears throat> the, either in that column or the questions and conclusions that we highlighted or circled those really important words that are going to get it to a nutshell. Andy. I, I was just going to say that um, when Professor Barry was here earlier, she was talking about uh, you know, this idea of Bushido and how, you know, as Carol was saying, it was really this kind of idea of the 19th century construct, but there were, there were like this, these codes of conduct. Right. That, that, but it's, it's interesting and kind of funny where they talk about plain clothing is fine. I was kind of whispering it over to, over to Andy. They plain clothing is fine, but when you take a look at that suit of armor, mm -hmm. that thing's immaculate. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just kind of funny how it's like when everyday life is, you know, eh, you know, don't worry about it. But when you're on the battlefield, then it, that's kind of kind of yeah. splendid. Okay. Charlie? I think the same that I was reading last night <laughs> we won't take a show at this. <laughs> but there is that, that um, additional piece of information, or that, that additional thing. By the way, before you go to visit your lord at court or whatever, you should look at the people around you and adjust your dress accordingly. Yeah. Which I thought was a real crack up because I think that that's also good for adults yeah. in the modern age. <laughs> so, I would just say there's a lot of good stuff in there. So, um, and then, uh, so my focus question was what? Uh, what parts of being a samurai did Hojo Sun Sun think were important? And then he, we said uh, he thought samurai should be modest, loyal and respectful, educated in reading and writing, and practice writing courses, which is the main idea of all those. Both the arts of peace and war, but boom and boom, almost did, uh, were important. So then, I, I almost got through the whole thing without saying it. <laughs> almost. I will give you a post on it. I know, I know. Uh, so, um, we took, and, and obviously you don't have to do all these parts to the lesson, you could do one, but to get at the idea of loyalty and serve and um, of serving and protecting, we took um, the cause and effect, we took the um, swords, how they protected, and then, um, and then a, another one that we talked about was the education piece. And that's what we put together. So they need evidence. So I think it's serve, protect, and education. And then they need specific evidence, and that's going to come from what they did. What was the time frame? Like, if you guys wanted to combine that lesson, like, how long would you maybe plan out for that? Three. Days. Three. Yeah. Yes. Um, probably a week. But yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's a nice little week, though. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and uh, you're here's so you'll get um, my possible take on on what that would look like. So, any other questions? I know I've gone through that quickly, but it's all out there in the. Yeah. Sorry, uh, the, the the graphic organizer that you had up there. Yeah. Um, are, are, Will that be available on, yes. on Dropbox? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, actually, I have to remember to remind Sarah to put it up there. I think it's in there. Is it? I think so. It was in this one. Oh, I... Oh. Well, let me... Two, three... Actually, I can go call Sarah. And, and remember, all this stuff, you can take it, copy it, move it, and, and mess around with it. As, if, you, so if you wanted to add other articles, you can do it.